What is up there, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Dynamic Conversations, the podcast where I chat with friends of mine about a variety of different topics. In this conversation, in this Dynamic Conversation, I've invited for a second round Asia Kaspari. To give a little introduction about Asia, she is a fashion and portrait photographer located in Germany, Hamburg. Uh, she, Some of her clients that she's worked with are Google, Audi, uh, Roland Verlag. Uh, she also has had her work uh, published in multiple magazines and had it showcased in many, many exhibitions. All to say, She's an amazing photographer. Some of the things that we talk about in this dynamic conversation are how Asya makes her models feel good, confident and calm during photo shoots. Uh, we also talk about the flow states. Uh, meditation is another topic that we discuss. Uh, also, how to not get discouraged when you become self-employed, uh, when you first start out as an entrepreneur or a freelancer. Um, because it easily can happen to get discouraged in the beginning. Uh, we as well talk about the victim mentality and as well whether or not to use your phone in the morning or uh, right before you go off to bed and many, many more topics to come. Now to find all the resources, uh, all the books, people, you know, everything that we talk about and mention in this conversation, check out the show notes located in the description of this episode. And there as well, you can find uh, social media links uh, to Asya if you want to follow her, or as well a link to her website. And as well, if you like to listen to our first conversation, which was episode 002, uh, that link will be as well located in the show notes. But with that, please enjoy this dynamic conversation with Asia Kaspari and me. It's back, right? I'm, yeah, I can hear you again. But you cannot see me? I can see you also. <laughs> but as a moving image or as a frozen image? <laughs> yes, as a, as a moving image, but I was just wondering if it's a delay, but it is not, you are alive. All right, so, okay. Um, but anyway, let's otherwise dig into some of the things that we wrote down that we want to talk about. Um, do you want to start with anything, uh, with any any topic that you want You go down? ahead, please. Or, okay, let me go ahead. Okay, then. So, all right. Um, <laughs> yeah, there were a few things that I was curious about to ask you. Um, and one was, so building something out like a photography a career or your own business or, or something, right? Um, or with me, like the IPS project, building that out. It's hard to explain sometimes to people uh, what you do. And also with photography, people know a camera and what photography kind of is, you know, you take photos of people, but sometimes, and I'm sure you have had been asked that question, like, do you earn actually money with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, Oh my God. I feel yes. so offended. <laughs> yeah. Right. And yeah. I mean, I know a lot of photographers who are very successful, you amongst them that I'm like, of course you can make good money with this. But for some people, cause it might not be always like, I mean, maybe it's kind of like a, of a newer job, uh, than in the past with your parents or grandparents or so, because it's mostly them that are kind of like asking that, like, can you make money with that? Uh, but mainly what I want to get to, or of the question is, how did you not get discouraged becoming a photographer when people told you, can you actually make money from this? Or when you were in the, the beginning parts of building it up, you know, the career, how did you stay motivated to, to build that up? Do you ask me for advice to new young photographers or how did I not get discouraged? I'm particularly asking actually how you took this on. So if there's some advice on that, that's great. But I'm just curious, how did you not dis get, get discouraged? Like, was there something that you did? Were there some words of advice that you've heard that helped you? Was there anything that you did or that helped you during those years? First of all, this question that you mentioned, like, 
Oh, really? Oh, so cool. So are you you a photographer full time? Can you really earn money with it? That will send me on a rant because like now I, I don't get that question anymore. Oh, that's interesting. Now you're asking it. I'm realizing that I don't get it anymore. You huh. do not get it anymore. I don't get it anymore. Just do you wonder speak. why? In, I mean, why you don't get it too much that's now? Super interesting. Compared to some years ago. <laughs> mm, yeah, I think because most people like it's very rare that I meet a person that I don't know and who hasn't followed me or seen anything of me oh. on any social media before. Mm -hmm. Like I, I do meet those people, but they don't have the audacity to ask me this question, right? Because that's a little bit personal about mm. the money's part. So everyone who is my acquaintance has followed me on Twitter, uh, on Instagram or uh, Facebook or seen my website or my newsletter and they saw me grow. And I think by now it is really apparent that I do earn money with right. it. Yeah. And it would seem like a weird question to ask. Right, you have behind the scenes photos that they can see and they're like, ah yeah, she's actually on the job. Yeah. I think the message that I'm transmitting quite a lot is that I am active, things are happening in yeah. my life and like, wow, even bigger now. Wow, I got this interview. Wow, um, I'm so honored that this big advertisement agency uh, asked me and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I guess that they would be like weird to ask if, if it's all for free. Mm, yep. But I got this question a lot in the beginning, in the first years. <laughs> and I, it made me so mad. First, it made me really insecure, really in the beginning. Yep. And I felt like I didn't really have a quick, good answer. I, f I started to justify and explain. And then I noticed, why am I doing this? I feel uncomfortable. Yep. And then I started to protect my anger at the people and think like, how dare you? I don't go around asking you how much you make and how big was your bonus this year? You know, did you make your internal goals with your boss? And, you know, found it like super weird how people ask that. And then always try to think, what are they really asking? Do they really want to know, like, what's the question behind it? That's do they good. want to know my exact yeah. salary mm -hmm. or do they want to maybe they have like this dream inside themselves of leaving everything behind and jumping in into what their passion is but have this fear of maybe not earning enough money and then they want me to confirm this doubt and be like yeah it's possible. well that could be one one thing for sure but also maybe they have not met a lot of photographers or people who said that they are a photographer right so they're actually generally curious like you know do you actually make a living from this because i've not met too many people who do this and maybe they didn't say that last part of that but maybe that's what they also should say yeah that they just really uh don't know uh, too much about it sometimes they weren't even asking like how much money do you make or can you live from it but they were asking more so how is it going but yeah. i don't know it even like in the beginning that put a lot of pressure on me and sure I felt like, how can I answer this? Like I'm in the beginning. So of course I'm not earning that much, but like it's yeah. going in the right direction. And I never had a short, mm. good answer to that. It's a really tough one, right? And it's really unfair exactly when you are just starting out to expect immediately that you should be successful. Yeah. I mean, and maybe they're not even thinking that far, right? That they're not even taking it into account that you just started out. I don't even know if they had that information, uh, but if they do, yeah. <laughs> and I think but it's I, an, it's a question that really requires it. If you want to be honest, it will really differ, differentiated answer. Mm -hmm. How is it going? So there's so many levels on which I can answer to that, you know, mm -hmm. like this is my hopes, my dreams. This is where I failed. Um, but there I got courage and money wise, it's this, but reputation wise, because in photography, especially, I don't know, in your business, a lot in the beginning is to build, yeah, you to build your brand and to build your reputation. And you will work for free a lot yep. just to get a publication in that magazine and to have that editor remember you and go to that networking event. Yep. So that also were successes for me, mm -hmm. but of course not it's money true. wise. Yes. And mostly people link success directly with money, but not per se with the people that like your work and that want to work in the future with you more. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, that for years it made me like angry. <laughs> I get that. I get that totally. Because <laughs> I've like, been like, asked, very impolite, like. To but ask. I've been asked that, uh, or I've gotten that a lot of times in the beginning too. And you don't get it anymore. Um, I cannot immediately remember. At least not. I mean, many times people are slightly unsure of how I exactly can make money through that, through, for example, the platform, the IPS project, because they just generally don't know. And so they might ask like, yeah, how do you make money from that? Yeah. Uh, as, as a real curious question, like, no. Yeah. Yeah. And it's mostly, I do have to say, it's mostly a bit older people like, you know, uh, that yeah. just have no idea how these systems kind of work. Uh, this, oh, you know, the internet kind of world or the internet world, how that kind of works. So I, I, I just, I kind of take the question from there on that I am like, yeah, I get that you don't immediately understand that world maybe. And then I just try to explain it. So, but in general, the people who know me now, like in my family or people also like, yeah, have seen me now a bit more on the internet and see also if they go to the website and all the things that is, that are happening there, they get more feeling like, ah, oh, this is actually a thing. So I do not, get it too much more and i'm also more sure what i am actually doing where in the beginning when i was building it out it was like a rough stone that i was still having difficulty with defining exactly what i was trying to make out of it uh, so it was also sometimes harder and i was more insecure insecure with explaining it to people mm. now i kind of know exactly what i'm making and what it is and so but they feel yeah. the confidence and with that also they feel like, ah, oh, yeah, it's probably, yeah, it works. To be honest, I think I wouldn't also, I wouldn't be able to explain how you make money. I mean, I know it's through selling <laughs> courses, but I like, I wouldn't yeah. know if that's the only income source or if you uh, have different ones. And plus, different I, ones. like, I don't want to know, you know, I'm not asking you the amount, but I, uh -huh. It would be super hard for me to estimate, like, are you making, you know, 10,000 a year? Or are you making 100,000 a year or somewhere in between? Or, you know, yeah. absolutely no idea. But also, it's none of my business. I think. Well, I actually made on YouTube, on my personal YouTube channel, um, like maybe a 45 minutes where I explained everything on that. On, All right. On okay, my streams of income. Oh, super cool. I'll yeah. Watch it. Yeah, and I mean, I literally explained everything and I kind of made that video because I had questions on this so many times that I was like, let me just make a video on this. So when people <laughs> ask me, I can just send it to them and I don't have to explain it every time. Yeah. And also just because uh, whenever I get a, a similar question asked multiple times or many times by someone, I'm kind of just, I just am like, okay, let me create or, or put out the information through a piece of content like a blog post or a video. Yeah. Uh, so I did that with that actually. Well, an efficient way I found was two things. First of all, my mom, she told me, yeah, but you don't always have to take everyone super serious and go into detail and how's mm -hmm. it going and then explain like on that level is good there. I'm afraid there, blah, blah, blah. Just say, you know, if you don't feel like it, just say good. You exactly. <laughs> Point. And I was like, yeah. wow, that's so easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then with the money part, I could always silence people when I said like, which was true. I said, I can live from it and I don't have any job apart. All right. So yeah, that's an easy and short answer that explains so then, everything. That like I don't have to it. work in a bar at night or anything. I just live from my photography and then they're like, oh, cool. Oh, congratulations. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, but how, how did you not get discouraged in the beginning, building this up, this because career? I felt that those people don't have any idea anyways. So what they mm. said didn't matter to me. Then my motivation didn't come from earning money and is still not com coming from earning money. It's like a necessity to do it. Yeah. Like sounds cheesy, but I'm just following my heart and I feel I cannot fail possibly, at least not economically, because even though, even if I don't get paid anymore, I don't get customers, I would still photo do uh, like take photographs, sure. right? Even if I was unemployed, I would still take photographs. Yeah. I mean, if someone steals my camera, you know, and I don't have any penny left, I don't know what I would do, but. Mm. You will and, figure something out. Yeah, I will figure something out. Yeah. And so no one can take that from me. That's like super good. And if I earn money, money with it, even better. Yeah. 
and I'll do it until it doesn't work anymore. And so that's when I get discouraged and every day proves that I'm right, but I might be wrong at one point. Mm. And then I just change course. Exactly. And the interesting thing is that I, those people who didn't know, who were like acquaintances from school, like old school colleagues asking like, oh yeah, is it really working? I have, to, I, there are so many photographers on the market. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't affect me at all because I just, well, I was also lucky because I was, success was coming in. Like I said, it was always like, it was going upwards all the time. Mm. What were so, you doing? Yeah. What were you doing for it to move upwards? Mm, yeah also yeah, that's a complex question but just to finish that one topic what's sure, more discouraging yeah. now is that i'm in the community i reach the community of the professional photographers i'm part of um of an association of german ah um, uh, yeah I saw it on your website yeah it's quite yeah it's really renowned here and it's like good and it's i recently like... got upgraded to a professional member before i was a junior Right. So that it's like a, it's, it's like a badge. Yeah. That shows like, okay, <laughs> professional status. Yes. Yeah. And so for me, it is, um, for me, my motivation to be there is because I'm among like the, one of some of the top photographers of Germany. And I've, I'm so excited. That's where I dreamt to be for years, just nice. to be in that community and to sit next to like the one who does the, I don't know, Audi campaign and be like, hey, so Uwe, how did you do it with the light, blah, blah, blah. And I love that. And but that must they, be amazing. It, it's amazing. And I'm just, you cannot imagine, I'm sitting there uh -huh. and my heart, like, I'm just happy every time we have a meeting. Everyone else is annoyed because the meetings drag on for four hours and I'm just <laughs> happy. <laughs> well, because, because it took time and work, right, to get there. Yeah. And then when you finally are sitting there amongst those other professionals, you're like, yeah, this is where I belong. This is where I worked to get to. And then you're there. And uh, so, yeah, but that's, that yeah. I, can, yeah, I can imagine for how good that must feel in my youth and also my twenties, whenever I met a photographer, I don't know, I got this tingly feeling and I got like a magnet. I got drawn to that person and I mm. asked so many questions and I dreamt to live their life. So it's amazing that now I just mm. do it. And it's also crazy how long it took me to get there, you know, because that craving I had for years. But what I'm going to is that among those photographers are a lot of old photographers who have known the golden 90s, for example. Mm -hmm. And apparently that has been a time when people were just earning um, thousands and thousands and thousands of euros or marks or dollars with photography. Okay. And those times are over. And they, um, they mourn it, which I can totally understand. And they are quite negative. There is like not, I'm not saying everyone who's old, but like quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And they are, they are more the risk of it discouraging younger photographers because they're saying all the time, you know, it's mm. so much competition. A photo is not worth anything anymore. Everyone has their cell phone. Um, the clients treat you like shit. They want it now. And then they don't value you. And, yeah, they're approaching yeah. this the wrong way though because times will always change in every industry and they're kind of just lingering in the past not taking the opportunities in photography that might be now today that weren't in the past because uh, they're so fixated on how it used to be yeah plus i think there's no moral obligation how photography should be i mean yeah. i can understand that someone's mourning some things that they had that they wish would be there yeah but it's not yeah exactly so and no one says that a photo that i don't know um dr edgar food uh, company uses for their packaging has to be a professional photo they can take a cell phone photo if they like mm -hmm. i can be unhappy about that okay i can wish that they had a more professional photo but mm -hmm. if it's enough for them if it works for them there is no law saying that it has to be different and then maybe there is no need for photographers anymore so what it's not that we are saving lives you know i know there's a big industry and there's like people's salary depending on it but i think you cannot tell people like what they're basically saying often is that other people don't know about um quality and style 
mm. and that they are um, that there's less budget and they are corrupting the market with a bad taste. Yeah, but I guess they're just so fixated on on something from the past. Like I think th if they would focus more on the things that people might be interested in now more around photos, like at, yeah, like phone photography for example, and take a general interest in phone photography and teach courses on that or, you know, because I think there's a high demand of people who would be interested to learn how to take good photos through their phone. But you've got to be willing to look at today uh, to actually take those chances too. That's true. Because yeah. there is still a need of photographers or people teaching how to take photos. Um, or Instagram, for example, is also a great platform for, the, for photographers, right? Uh, and I guess those old guys or old women uh, are not looking at today world. Well, it's true. It's like, I think you cannot make as much money anymore because, for example, there used to be a sector where it's called stock photography. Probably yeah. you know it, right? Yeah. That you buy like a ready-made image that fits sure. whatever you need. Mm -hmm. And it was some photographers dedicated their whole life or career to right. that, producing those images. My, I don't know, like two men shaking hands and then mm. it's bought by a company for their PowerPoint presentation. Yep. And now there is a website, for example, it's called um, Unsplash. I know it. Yeah. And it's for free and it's really high quality. Yep. And you can, I think you can get nearly everything that you want. Of course, not custom made. It's not your employees who are on there, but like in general, if you just want to illustrate a, some subject matter, you will find it. Yeah. And that was the, like the death, uh, what do you call it? Like <laughs> sure. that killed a whole market, seg market segment. Yeah. And that's like, I can understand it's horrible for people. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't see that there's a moral obligation behind it, that it has to exist. Okay. You are replaced. It's horrible, but exactly, and it will happen always. There's never gonna be a safe job position or a safe thing that is never gonna change. It's all. Everything is always changing. That's why I am pro. Um, how do you call it? Like universal basic income, <laughs> because I think yeah. that way people can just follow their passion. They can continue taking photos, mm -hmm. but don't have to worry for the rent. Right, the, the, the pressure of earning money and the anxiety if you don't have it, yeah, would take, it would take the pressure off, sure. Yeah. Okay, so you didn't get discouraged building your career up. No, not, not money-wise. And also my living, my standard of living is very low. Mm-hmm. And um, I like that. I even lowered it. Yeah. I moved out of a big apartment to a smaller one and it, a huge burden went off my chest. And I tend on staying here for a while, mm -hmm. even though I'm earning quite well now and I hope it's going up. Um, so I don't need that much. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, what's the alternative? Like, don't take photos, don't even try. Mm. You know? this reminds me of uh, yeah the interview with uh, Naval because he was also talking about uh, like to me always like the combination or that that what you do feels like play has always been something that I always felt like yeah that makes so much sense yes. but when he was confirming that again because yes. he also talked about it I was like and it's someone like him you know I was like, yes, see, like, it's true. <laughs> because in the long run, it's always going to play out so much better than if you're just only fixated on the earning of money. You know, that alone, yeah, it's not going to play out so well in the long run. But if you have a passion or a love for something, and even if you would not earn money doing it, still would do it, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pay out, literally. <laughs> I'm reading a book at the moment. It's called The Lazy Way to Success by yeah. Fred Gladstone. I don't know this. I didn't know it before I got it for my birthday from um, yeah. a person that I really appreciate. For your opinion. birthday. Yeah, for my birthday. He's like, hey, here, the lazy way to get uh, to success for your birthday. <laughs> and I wonder what he wants to tell me because I'm already like kind of half through. 
I'm reading it every morning a, li a little bit. But it's also, I have to admit, like it's a lot of, like it's big pages and, and drawings. and. It looks like a different format of a book. So I guess it is filled with, yeah, with illustrations. Yeah, you know, oh, wow. So it's like quite fast to read it. Oh, that's fun. And it's fun to read. But I wonder what, because he knows me well, I think. And he um, he's my cousin's partner. Uh -huh. And he's also self-employed. So he uh, he's the person I feel understands me. Yep. And well, I'm curious to find out what the second part says. But so far, everything that's in here, I feel that it's, uh, is it called preaching to the converted? It's, he's saying things I completely agree, but I'm already um, following them. So basically... Oh. Yeah, he, he's also saying, like, follow your heart. And when it feels like part of play, then you're on the right path. Mm. And he even, he says one thing that I find interesting, mm -hmm. that uh, success and hard work are inversely connected. Like, the harder you work, the less success you will have. And the more you get lazy, the more success you will have. No, did I say it? The so the less you, work, you the do, less... the more you will get? Yeah, something like that. But how would that be correct? He says, never anything good came out of a lot of hustle. I don't know if I agree with that. I find it quite radical. I mean, is there no more explained behind that sentence? Yeah, then he says, of course, that you should, like, if you want to lie around, then lie around. But mm -hmm. um, he says, once you find your dharma, I think he gets it from spirituality, like yeah, your okay. calling. Yeah where you feel like complete bliss and in a flow and play, mm -hmm. then you naturally get up and do stuff and they feel easy. He's just against like things that feel hard and struggle. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not against like doing a lot, but yeah. um, I, more or less like you do it, I think. Yeah, but I also work hard. <laughs> I mean, I like it and that's why it drives me to basically every day work on it but i work a lot you know it's not like all of this came i mean okay if you would mean more like okay it should feel not like hard work but more like fun then i get it but it's not like i would have gotten to where i am today by by no hard work but what is hard work well okay well for me then hard work is yeah is getting up sitting down and doing what you should do to get to your goals that you've set. But is there some times or always something that you would rather do and would like yes. to do better? And then you say yourself, tell yourself, no. There are times where I would rather do something else because I feel less motivated on that day. But sometimes it's just about sitting down and then the motivation comes. Yeah, maybe you would be even more successful if on those days you did something else. <laughs> uh, maybe. I, I mean, I, I get maybe in, in, in the way that if you would do something else, you might think about other things or, you know, and with that, come up with better solutions to something. So I guess maybe, uh, but I don't know. I don't feel right at the moment how I'm doing it by sitting down and working uh, that it hasn't, that it has failed me. Like, things have been going up steadily in a good way. But I guess he's not saying that you have to love every second of your day, you know, and never ever do it. Because that's impossible. Yeah. I think that's a very... But like the broad thing that you are not yes. dragging yourself to work mm -hmm. and working for it. Of course. And that's not what I have. Uh, so I, I have not read the book, so I, I do not know exactly what it is about. Um, but how, how, like, do you like it so far? Yeah, like it's far, it's easy to read. <laughs> yep. And, um, but I'm also like curious to ask my friends, um, my cousin's partner's mm -hmm. opinion or reason why he gave it to me. Well, yep. Because he might, must have thought that there's something in it that I can learn and that I'm not applying so far. I or, did. or do you think that might be the reason or do you think he might just be like, yeah, that could be a fun book for her without much thought behind it? Well, I think then, like, if you really think that, then I would give someone a novel, you know? But that's but, what you would not... do. That's not what someone else would do. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, because I, I, do you like to receive books? Yeah, I do. Okay. 
So even if it could be a really bad book, you would still read it if someone gave it to you? Well, I would give it a try because I built, I first give the benefit of the doubt to the person trusting okay. that they have some thought behind it. For example, my aunt for my birthday, she also gave me a book mm -hmm. and it looked like the typical um, Buddhism book with yep. some wise thoughts about life or something. Mm -hmm. And I must admit, I hope she's not listening to this by them. <laughs> and I didn't, yeah, didn't really feel like <laughs> excited when I got it to read it. Um, yeah, just, yeah, I don't know. Um, and then she wrote a card saying that this book has um, come into her life when she was 40 years old, also because I recently turned 40, mm -hmm. and um, that she has read it since, um, like, I don't know how many times, and that it has accompanied her life, and that it's one of the most important books for her in her life. And yeah. that totally changes everything, because now I'm super curious to read it, and mm. also to get closer to my aunt, to understand what's moving her. Okay, sure. Yeah. But I mean, like, if so, I would be really mad if someone gives me a thoughtless, shitty book and then I waste my time uh, reading it because there's so many good books and I feel I don't have enough time yeah. to read all of them. So I really have to choose wisely. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> but do you feel with this book that it's a wise book to read? Well, I must admit, so far, like I say, I'm half through and it's nothing new. Yeah. So, but as, as it's so easy to read, um, I will continue and try yeah. to, read. well, actually I must say there's, I want to read to you because he asked some questions. He's saying like, yeah, you should, you know, find your calling and good, um, something that feels, makes sense to you and that gives you a lot of joy. Mm -hmm. And that is like, uh, something that you win, but also your environment wins. Mm -hmm. And, um, and if that is not the case, like, how can you find it? And he's asking some questions, very simple questions, but actually I took some time yesterday to sit down and, and think about them. And one was like, what is something that you're really good at then? What is something that is easy for you to do? Um, then what is the task that gives you, gets you so enthusiastic that you can't stop doing it? Yeah. And to more, where do you like to put like extra work, like engagieren in German, that it would be in English, like. I oh, think. that sounds like a Flemish word. Um, that also yeah. involves others, that you do some good maybe for others. Wait, what, can you say it again? So the German question is, uh, wo engagieren Sie sich gerne? Engagieren. Engagieren is, um, I don't, I, like get I, involved, get yeah, okay. Give your time and energy to for a good cause, maybe. Okay. And where do you feel that you are of use and people need you? Right. Yeah. Those, Those are questions. a couple of good questions, actually. Yeah. And I like the question, especially, um, what what is easy for you? Yes, because what 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 might be easy for you? is very hard for other people. Yeah. And actually, if you can do something that's easy to you, but hard to someone else and create something around that, for example. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you have something to offer. And then I think if it overlaps with, it's also an activity that you cannot stop doing and, yeah. you know, and you are good at, then, then you found boom. The golden, yeah. The golden ticket to, to something for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right. So, so you have more questions <laughs> or tell me something that's moving you at the moment. What's moving me? Yeah. What is like, uh, maybe let's go to the negative part. Like I'm in general, I would like to know from you. Um, is this something that you wrote down on your list or, or is this just something? Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. actually. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> How, why do you assume that I have a list? Uh, I don't know. Cause I have a list. <laughs> 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 but I actually do. <laughs> is there, like, I'm more wondering, is there a worry that you have in your life, like for your life? Not on a small scale, but like in a big scale. Mm -hmm. A worry. Any kind of worry, but it has to be big scale. 
yeah for your own life like not for the planet you know not that an atomic bomb goes up and yeah. kills all the mm -hmm. civilization a worry that i have um hmm hmm well so far i would say that i do not have immediately a huge worry. Otherwise, I would have already said it now. <laughs> um, yeah, I am super practical sometimes on worries. And I'm just trying to, to focus so much on how to deal with them that I forget the worry. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I don't have, per se, a a major worry at the moment <laughs> can i suggest one and you say that's not a worry please yes so how about not finding the right girlfriend or partner and <laughs> okay. staying single all your life so i recently got together with someone i don't know if we yeah i think you mentioned it the last time yeah um but what if she turns out to be like not the right one and then <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i mean so right now, I would say, I mean, she is, uh, I mean, and relationships like uh, friendships, like any, you know, relationship, it's, it, it grows, right, through time. And as long as I feel like we're both growing as individuals and as a couple together, um, I would say that she is still the right person to me. But at the moment when she or, or me would be going very different paths and we are not growing together or as individuals anymore, then I would tackle that problem then, but I'm not worrying about it now because it's not something now. Uh, so I'm saving myself from the anxiety of stressing about something that is not even happening now. But if it would happen, I would just take it on then and just talk with her. <laughs> yeah, but so you don't also in, uh, like in regards to partnership, you don't expect to be with one person to the end of your life. That is not- I don't think it's, it's super realistic to be honest. and. Not that I'm trying, I mean, if she's listening to it, not like I'm not hoping for that, right? <laughs> yeah. But life is just too unpredictable that I can say 100% yes to certain things in life. And people, individuals change, you know, can dramatically change or certain life events might happen. So um, I hope for it, but I, I do not expect uh certain things from life that i cannot expect from it like that okay so does that do make you sense worry? yeah it makes sense do you maybe worry that your business will stagnate at that point and that you never get over this level until you die what do you mean with stag what stagnate yeah so i mean like now it stays in the same place it is now so now it's established you can live from it but you will mm -hmm. not develop any further or it will not grow will not get more attention more money more reaching I think more people i think that's super up to me if i put time effort work in it to make something more from it it's so in control i think that that if I want it to grow more, then it's totally up to me to do make that happen. I okay, think so. You feel a high degree of self efficacy, is it called like that? That you feel like that you have an impact on what like on your surrounding. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, you have also good. an impact. I mean, you all you you decide. I mean, how you behave to your to to the people around you. I think that's very much in your control. So you can have an impact, a positive or a negative one. I agree, decision. but I think many people don't think so. No, because it's more of a level of self-awareness, I think. But, and it's a trait of healthy individuals. Also, there's other layers to that, like, like that, exactly. Uh, there's certain complex things or certain mental health problems that might um, make it more complicated. But I always think there's a choice. So you don't feel you're a victim to the circumstances? Well, which, which, which circumstances? <laughs> everything life around you no but like no no that's just provocative no i know that you don't probably because otherwise you wouldn't have said that before i feel like i have a lot of control over certain over my decisions and over my life um 
but then things from the outside like other people i don't have much control about right uh but uh it gives me peace of mind to know that at least i have control over who i am and my decisions i actually mm -hmm. totally forgot your question but <laughs> no, <laughs> so no yeah not, that was, i'm not that sure was, where to go right it, now it fits is... it fits and then on a global scale like for the world do you have worries regarding the world also very little i mean not not to say that i i just don't think too much about it and i think this is very frustrating sometimes for people who want to talk about this with me <laughs> or i don't know that other people have asked that before <laughs> Yeah, I mean, or, you know, but it's just, or, you know, worries like Corona and what it's going to do with the world, for example. I'm just right now, what, like, what is happening now and what can I do? I'm just more, f I'm so focused on this because that's the only thing in the end that I can do is, you know, is, is things here. I, I cannot affect too much. Like, things will happen in the world, whether I want it or not. And it's more about dealing it when it happens than about thinking about it. I no, I mean, you can, if you anticipate it, you can try to prevent it and do something before it happens. That's true. That's true. Of course. You yes. could be, uh, get active politically, for example. Yes. Or the environment, for example, you can already make conscious decisions or choices on impacting it less. Uh -huh. I think there are some very valid concerns for climate change and there are, of course, political right movement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, am I worried about certain things in the world? Uh, I always think this, to be honest, that life will always try to create balance. If something goes up, it will come down again. And if something goes down, it goes up again after a while. So in the long run, I'm never too worried that everything will be destroyed. And even if it would be, I think it will go up at some point again. Mm -hmm. It doesn't frustrate me to hear that is saying you, that, because you, you said that the people get frustrated if you don't have enough worries that you can present. But it was, I was really just curious to see to know and yeah and, and i mean worries idea. like the environment that's something that i can do already now and that's what i i do try to be very conscious about it and make individually decisions on trying to harm it as as less as but isn't your behavior change always preceded by some kind of concern or worry like how 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 do you get yeah. from not worrying to changing that's, your behavior behavior that, that's just survival instincts right uh, that you always will try to survive in your environment. Yeah. Yeah, I don't worry. Like, I wouldn't consider myself a person who worries a lot. And I know I have some people around me who worry constantly about everything. And I, I don't. Yeah. But I recently watched the film of David Attenborough. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Our Planet or something. And mm -hmm. in those moments, I, but I like, I like that I worry because it's a motor. Of, yeah, it's uh, a motivator of change yeah. yeah and mm -hmm. i do change things after what doing watching that like it has always has to reach a certain level to get me moving but there's but, worrying yeah. to a healthy degree and over worrying where you're yeah. just losing control and yeah, so I'm it's not, not lying like, awake at night and can't sleep because of, right. of that so no. it's not like i do not have worries i hope i don't mean i mean it's not like i'm a machine who, who cannot like of course i have worries but i i just immediately use those worries to do something with them as a motivator like you said yeah okay okay yeah but i think it's yeah like mm -hmm. you said it's so you do have them but you don't stay in the victim mode or in the yeah i hate it because i've been in, in that the panic for, mode yeah because i feel like i've been in the victim mode for years when i was young that uh, i was and i hated it because nothing changed yeah. And I think actually that could be a huge factor why I am to the whole extreme side now. I'm also reading another book. I will teach you to be rich from yeah. Maya. Oh, I know that book. Yes, yes. Ramit Sethi. Uh -huh. I just yep. started. Mm -hmm. And I would just want to read um, what I read yesterday. I just read the first chapter. Uh -huh. And I, it just spoke so over my heart. <laughs> um, 
this is where the victim mindset comes in. So many people complain about politicians and sociological problems without looking around at their own behavior. They give up at the first sign of failure. If you want to be a passenger in life, fine, go with the flow. Mm -hmm. I found it's a lot more fun to be the captain of my own ship, even yep. if I go off course sometimes. I would completely comp agree. And then the next sentence, as you can see, I don't have a lot of sympathy for people who complain about their situation in life, but do nothing about it. Yeah. That's why I wrote this book. Love it. And I love it. I completely agree. I know it's not so nice to say this and I feel I come off as arrogant sometimes. So I try to hold back with that often. Yeah. yeah. But it I'm hurts. So, <laughs> so impatient and so, so angry at people who only complain and I'm so uninterested. I'm so bored yeah, yeah, by same. people who only complain. Yeah. And I just yesterday and I talked to my boyfriend about it and I read him this uh, passage because I've, I think from with me, it comes from my childhood when my grandmother, she was complaining and complaining and she was in victim mode. And I think it was a development inside myself for years. It's not that like from the first moment on, I was annoyed. It was for years that I listened to her mm. and tried to show empathy and sympathy and, you know, and, yeah. and tried to, that she feels that I'm, I'm there for her. You know, I'm not judging her. I'm just there and listening. And then I would become a teenager and I would suggest things and she would of course complain about my grandfather too like you oh, promised me the kitchen but then he never does delivers what he says and blah 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 and even loving my grandfather like to bits and pieces I was like come on then separate you know you can get a divorce you can live your own life if you're not happy with him after like even more years realizing she doesn't want to change she doesn't want to change yes. anything and that even really if she's miserable and I'm saying that like, I'm a, I have a big love for my grandmother too. She died already, but, yeah. but that left such a big imprint in me that I really have kind of zero tolerance. Yeah. Anymore. I would say, don't want to change. and I guess that zero tolerance came because so many years you tried to change someone who was always in the victim mode, but it didn't do anything, even though you put so much energy and effort in it. Yeah. And of course, I don't, she doesn't have to change because I suggest something, but I feel that, and I can understand with uh, also, like we said before, I studied a little bit of psychology and understand why people maybe get something out of that role too. And yep. she gets attention and there's a reason, there's a system behind it, why it works like this. Yep. She doesn't have to change. Mm -hmm. um, and that is also fine. She doesn't have to change, but not with my time. Yeah. Yeah. And probably one of the biggest things in, you know, if you would do therapy or something is that you just can't change people if they don't want to change oh, themselves. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, oh, you God. could say the best words you could say and do the, the, the best things for them that could completely impact their life for the positive. But if they don't want to change, then it's not going to impact them in any way at all. But I somehow still, like I, I know it with my brain, but with my heart, I'm still trying to I offer know. them. Like I have some people around me who I feel fit this category too. Yeah. And I can't accept it. It makes me unhappy. So I give them books. I read them quotes. I give them movie, movie suggestions because I always feel like maybe just like, you know, like slowly showing and them. Who knows, right? Who knows maybe one of the, one of those days when they're really at a low, low point and they feel the motivation, they see your book and pick it up. Yeah. And they might change, but yeah. So it's not like I'm saying don't do it anymore because it comes out of a, co a too good place in your heart to stop that. Uh, and I as well do that often that I just try to put things or, or say things to people, even though they are not too motivated to actually want to change, but it's just too much in my nature and in your nature. So I, it's not like you should stop that actually. <laughs> But maybe yeah. to just know that... It makes me feel less helpless, maybe also. It's also right. more for me, probably, for myself. Exactly. To maybe <laughs> just know that, okay, after some time and some point when you did so much that you did uh, and they still aren't willing to change, then it's not your fault. Yeah, <laughs> you know, true. It's just they don't have the motivation. And so, yeah. But that's actually interesting to realize uh, now, too, that because I spent in the past so much years 
as a victim or I felt yourself, like, right? You I really yourself. felt like, yeah. And it was such, nothing changed, nothing mm-hmm. positive or nothing good came out of being in that victim mode or in that place that I really hated being there, that I just turned the whole other way now of, I never want to be that again. Yeah. Because I hate it. <laughs> Do you also get kind of worried when you're not in a good mood? Because I don't know, I have that sometimes. Mm. Because I have that image of myself that I'm like, you know, the one who makes things happen, who is positive, who's optimistic. Yeah. And then when I have a low mm-hmm. and I'm like a little bit in the like, oh, things are so hard, then I cannot accept it about myself. Because you think you lost it all of a sudden or? Yeah, because I hate those people. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to be that person and that I'm worried that I, I lost it and um, mm. and something's wrong. And then I get very active again, trying to solve that problem. You know, is it sleep? Is it, do, did I drink enough? Did I exercise enough? Um, blah, 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 blah. So I can feel in control again. And okay. I feel the good balance is reached when I can also allow myself to feel those periods in my life yeah. and have the general trust that they will be temporary and yep. it just, you know, I cannot force it and control everything. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just uh, the wave of life that you're kind of surfing on. It's not always going to be a great wave. Sometimes it's going to be yeah, a less good one, but it's part of life. As long as you're more happy than unhappy, then it will return. <laughs> In yeah, general. but so can you, do you like yourself or can you accept yourself when you're like grumpy, in a bad mood, unenergetic? Mm. I mean, there are less fun days because you're feeling less good. So for sure, they are not the pleasant days, you know. And so with that, you also feel a bit less good about yourself. Um, but as long as it's not getting getting chronic, that it's like days and weeks and months then even if alone, even if on that day I, I feel a bit less good about myself, it should normally change the next day again that I actually forget about it. Okay. But I, I try to, yeah, I try to just be very um, observable. Or I try to observe myself when I'm in those days and just see very rationally what's <laughs> happening. And yeah, like I know. But it's the rational part many times for me that actually helps me because I get so emotional sometimes. Why so do I, you get emotional? I, I mean, I, like, I, that's why I naturally gravitate more to being very practical and very rational because I very easily get affected by a word that someone says or, or by something that I see or hear. I, it impacts me tremendously. Okay. That also through the years, I focused more on what actually helped me with dealing with those, that intense amount of emotions that I feel and being practical and rational helps me. And so now because I've done it so much, I feel like I wired my brain more to immediately get practical and rational when I get to a very emotional state. But so is it negative for you to get to an emotional oh, state? No, it's, it's, it's sorry, uh, if, if it's negative. Yeah. No, it's not negative. Um, it's just uh, normal. It's a human thing to get emotions. So. But why do you wire yourself to get to the rational part immediately? Oh, because it's too overwhelming you... sometimes. And so it's, it's out of control instead okay. of in control. And to make it in control, I have to balance it out by the other part. And that's rationality instead of emotional, you know. And so it's just trying to balance myself out by seeing what is lacking. <laughs> uh, can, can, Does can that make sense? Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. But I find it super interesting because I don't know that side of you. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess not you, many people actually. Can you describe like a circumstance when that would happen? When you would have like intense emotions? Yeah, sure. When, when some someone says something negative about me, for example, or, or like even a tiny word or a tiny sentence that. I immediately pick up and it just becomes so overwhelming in me that I just could be not sleeping from it for days just because of one tiny thing that someone said 
And I guess many people have it to degrees, right? That, that someone said something unnice to them and that it bothers them. But I sometimes in the, in the, particularly in the past, right? Would be, not be able to sleep days from that because I kept thinking about such a thing, okay. <laughs> about one word that someone said to me. Um, and that's where being rational and practical and just kind of being an observer and just thinking like, okay, you know, people give what they have inside or, or just trying to apply some of these philosophies or, or these words of wisdom, uh, I, can, I, I, I can stabilize myself with, with that. Mm, it's kind of also self-protection. Yeah, and, and self-awareness also in a way, right? That you are aware that that person and their opinion isn't the opinion of everyone on you. So trying to put things in perspective, but you need to be able to observe and be self-aware to do that. Do you only have that with uh, negative emotions or also do you have overwhelming positive emotions where you quickly go to the rational part? No, I only have that with negative emotions. With, with happy emotions, um, that's for me to enjoy. I don't feel per se, although I could have, for example, um, <clears throat> well, in general, I would say with, with positive emotions, when they come, they, they, they are there and I just enjoy them. With negative ones, I try to do something with them because else they get out of control. Uh-huh. What's so bad about out of control? Out of control? Because it destroys me. Like it, it, it already did that in the past. That it got me to a too dark place. That I, uh, um, yeah, that it got too out of control. So ultimately, there is a part in you that you don't really trust yet. Like that, you feel that you have to keep in balance or keep in check. Otherwise, it can take over and destroy you. It would be less able to do that today than some years ago because I have a self. I have a better sense of myself and who I am and general wisdom through the years that it's less likely going to get to that same place like it did in, in, in the past. So it's not like I, I fear when I feel something negative that I fear for my life or something. It's not like that. It's just, yeah. Mm. Uh, so, no, it's not that dramatic or something <laughs> today. I find it interesting because for me, control is also a big topic in my life. And I think I, I, I love to have things under control and control yeah, my yes. environment. And I've been told by some people that, that I should, you know, let go, let flow, blah, blah, blah. And he, in his uh, book, also describes this state of flow mm -hmm. and of, um, he, there's different words depending on whom you ask that are used, sometimes it's called differently. Yeah. And then he has some quotes of uh, basketball players, of musicians, mm. of actors who got into that state and that they describe how they felt and what happened to them and all of them. Um, kind of described that they were not in control anymore, but just the medium through which yeah. I don't know it's spiritual now, but like through which something bigger acted, mm. and they were just part of, and it was no competition, no nothing where they what they wanted to reach, yep. no how's it called, um, no aspiration kind of, but just like letting go and yeah, being in the moment and playing and being a lightweight. Mm. And I found it interesting because he, st he particularly stresses that it means not being in control in that moment. But maybe it's a different area. Yeah, so that's also called the flow state, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but I think before you can get to that state, because the flow state, um, how do you get into it again? It's when you feel like you know exactly what you're doing, but feel a degree of challenge. And it's sort of like the middle of that that you enter a state of being challenged, but you exactly know how to handle it. I think the question of, are you in control? Are you not in control? It's not even a worry anymore. You don't have worries. No, moment. you're in different zone. You're in a yeah. Flow state. Yeah, right? you're in the zone. Where... That's also how it's called. Sometimes. Yeah, exactly. It's called, yeah, that's true. Um, Do you have that sometimes? 
Yeah, I've had that uh, in particular that I can remember now with with mountains, actually, <laughs> ah. with climbing mountains. Um, or with riding, I've had that too when I was riding things. Uh, but with mountains, I can remember very, very strongly, more easily, I would say, because it's such an intense experience because you are kind of hanging somewhere very easily. If you, I mean, if you make mistakes or a mistake, it's quite deadly. <laughs> so, but when I, when I, whenever I climb a mountain and it gets very challenging, but I know exactly what I'm doing, then I enter this state of flow. Then I'm completely in a different zone and everything kind of just works. It, it's, it's a very weird zone to actually describe because I, but it's, yeah, it's kind of like you're not leaving your body or something, but leaving maybe your head, you're just doing. Uh -huh. And I guess with writing, I've had that a few times too, where I was just, it was just coming out, everything, the words. And then when you look back at it, you're like, oh, wow, that, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, so I've had it. Yeah. Have you had it? Maybe with photography or? Yeah, yeah. I do. And I think it's for me, is this is, that's why I don't need drugs. It's the most yeah. powerful drug I experience. I'm, I want to experience it again and again, you know, and, and he also says you cannot push it. Yeah, you cannot true. plan for it. But I think you can make the circumstances more and more right that it's more likely to happen. And I've I had it many times with photography and I talked to some colleagues who have never had it. And I feel so sorry for them because it's, for me, it's the most amazing feeling. Never had it, but maybe because they were not aware that they were having it, or maybe they were they never had it. That could be too. I'm not sure, but mm, yeah, they said they never had it, but mm -hmm. and then yeah, and so I feel in that regard, I feel super um, grateful and blessed that I have it so often. That's awesome. I mean, when yeah, I, I photograph, it. I feel that like already before I knew about this concept of flow, I felt it, but mm -hmm. I didn't have words for it. Yeah. I just didn't know what it was that was happening, but I just felt that everything in the universe was at its right place. That's how I felt. And I were not, no, I said that I never worried so much, but it was like, mm, I was so much in my mind usually, <laughs> or I am. And yeah. in the, those moments, like you said, the mind is off. I'm so present in the moment. Yeah. Everything is there and everything feels light and joyful and flowing and together like a dance or like a play, mm. like in a bubble underwater and a special, I don't know, protected yeah. sphere. For someone who is often in his or her, his or her head, it's an amazing state to feel, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not to say, I mean, if you're a lot of times not in your head or, or, or less that it isn't amazing then too, but, uh, but it is, and like you said, it's actually a kind of drug Mm. Uh, that you don't need to dr take drugs for. Um, actually, if you want to read more, and I've not read the book, but I've heard so many people recommend it. Uh, it's a book about flow mm -hmm. states, and the book is called Flow. I think it's, li <laughs> it's literally called like that. Yeah. But it goes about that subject. Okay, and why not? Yeah, and it's a highly... I mean, if I'm not getting the name of the book uh, correct uh, right now, though, um, but it's a highly, highly, highly rated and recommended book let me just quickly check if it's called flow. I think it is though. That's I think why it's so amazing that my life took a turn and I became a photographer because it's good for me. I think it's healthy for me to counterbalance my being in my head and being super intellectual and thinking things through mm. with this other side that's more body and I don't know, heart yeah. and. Yeah, yeah, the book is called flow. Okay. Um, by who? Oh, um, by oh, by who? Because I guess there's more than one book called Flow. Like there's more than bo one book called Awareness. I recently bought it from Anthony Dumelo. Ah, did you read it? No, I bought the audiobook and I haven't yet uh, started listening to it because I'm still listening to Sapiens by Harari. Uh -huh. Uh Okay, so the book is called Flow, the Psychology of Optimal Experience, 
Harper, I'm, I'm going to mess up the name, Harper Perennial, oh, that's the, the publisher, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, uh, but if you check Flow, uh, it has on Amazon uh, 1,800 uh, ratings. Okay, okay, so, just uh, the highest rated book. <laughs> exactly. All right. Mihaly, and then a last name that I will not try to pronounce, um, <laughs> but that's the author. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Wait, I know it. I, oh, you um, know it. <laughs> no, no, because it's it's, the, it's kind of the the inventor, right? He doesn't recommend the book, but he's um, ah. yeah. Inventor. It's like a it's a name that is has a C in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, C C. C yeah, <laughs> just really. <laughs> I, I really I read. The imagine name. imagine interviewing him and trying to print. Oh my god. I read that name this morning and I also thought like Sijisk <laughs> Sintimali. Where is he from? I was wondering if Tim Ferris has has like him on the podcast and then tries to pronounce the name. <laughs> there is a totally different thing, but there's a, like the volcanoes in Iceland. They have crazy difficult names. And some years ago, when they were erupting on the news, <laughs> presenters were trying to, to say the volcano's name, and everyone was messing it up. Everyone. It was, yeah, a YouTube. Oh, wow. Well, I thought it was, like, from an... It just seems like a... Oh, he's an Hungari Hungarian-American psychologist. Oh, okay. So that's cool. All right. So... Yala, yeah, should we have a super quick bathroom break? <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yes. All right. So, or, or do you need to, I don't know, fill your glass up or, or something? I think I'm fine. Yep. So, do you want to still say something more about the topic that you brought up, or do you want to move to another topic? Let's move to another topic. All right. So... Out of my list, I had something else here for you. Uh, so, yeah, let me ask this. Um, also has to do actually with photography. Um, so th th what I wrote down is actually how to connect with people who you don't know and make them feel comfortable. So you take a lot of fashion and portrait photography, right? A lot of times, or I, I assume mostly, it's people that you don't know. And I'm just mm. curious, like, how do you, because you have to make them feel, you have to make them, yeah, feel comfortable to take a good photo from them. Uh, like how- You mean the model, right? Or the, the model, exactly. In front of my camera. Yeah, how, how, do you, how do you communicate with them? How do you make them feel comfortable and safe? Because I probably, I, I could imagine that that skill that you use there, you could also use just in daily life, maybe. Uh, so I, I was just curious to see, like, do you have, do you do something in particular that, that you know that you do that, may, that helps them feel safe and comfortable? Or is this just like a natural talent? I like the question. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> I think it's a mixture. Mixture I, of talents. <laughs> I do have and a gen genuine interest in the person in front of me. That could already be a tip, actually. Yeah, but I don't know if you're not interested in the person, what do you do? You can you can show interest in someone. That's something that you can actually. No, but I mean not at. show interest, but like really have interest. Yeah. Okay. So that I I'm just saying that I think that helps me that I really am interested in the mm -hmm. person in front of me, sure. and when I'm, I'm not. I'm only saying for the photographic situation because in yeah. general I think I can be very judgmental and arrogant. But, but when let's I'm leave taking, that aside. Leave, let's leave let's, that aside. Let's, let's, let's talk exactly about when you take photos of because someone. Because when I take photos, it's not that I'm hiding my judgment. I just don't have judgment in the moment. It's mm. so interesting. I really fall in love with the person in front of my camera mm -hmm. every time when I, I find them beautiful. I see their beauty, like unique beautiness. Beauty? Yeah. Beauty, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So that helps me as a basis, I think, because that is genuine and it transmits. And then of course, if a person see, feels seen and feels that someone is interested in them and thinks mm. that they don't judge and that they like you and think that you're beautiful, that's a good foundation to open up. Yep. Then I always make sure that the circumstances are that, that I have enough time to have a connecting talk before. Uh -huh. I, I more and more I'm getting sure of the role that I want to play or what kind of photography I want to take and I refuse um, jobs where it's like oh you, I only need, need like quick pictures just five minutes mm. I just I tell them I'm not the right photographer I can understand that you need them but I, I can recommend someone but I need time and I need space because I want that we build trust and um, yeah and find and play and get into a mode of playing yep then I think I am also, the more I have experienced, the better I can tell them in the beginning what it's going to be like, and that it gives them security. So I start with saying, we both don't know each other, so we will probably be very insecure in the beginning. Mm. But that is normal, you know? The first 15 minutes, we will be like, Ooh, okay, what, oh, shy. But then, let me assure you from my experience, we will then it will start to become fun. And then in the end, we cannot stop. Mm -hmm. And I think that helps people too. Definitely. Because then if they feel insecure in the beginning, they know it's super normal. And I'm not thinking, oh, everyone else has performed perfectly. Why are you so insecure? Yeah. And um, then I think I try to be a little bit like goofy and weird and, and also share my... Playful. Uh, no, I mean like more show my vulnerabilities. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like make me less perfect. Mm, yep. So um, maybe they can relate. Do you consciously do that or is that something that just naturally help, uh, happens as well? Yeah, that's an interesting, it's another topic that I would be interested, maybe not today, but to talk to you about because I feel mm. I've been thinking about how do people connect, right? And um, because connection is a human need. Um, and then there are strategies how to connect with people. And I don't think it's just like magic that happens or doesn't happen. I think you can influence it. Definitely. And I feel that sometimes I'm a little bit limited in my strategies or my one go-to strategy is to show myself, uh, to show a lot of, to open up and show a lot of vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. And it's very, it works really well. I'm quite successful with that strategy. Um, but also it would be nice to have a broader range of strategies and maybe it's not good or nice to always tell everyone in the beginning where I'm, where I suck, where I'm really bad. <laughs> why, you uh, know, yeah. I feel that, yeah, I don't have that much of a range in that regard. So I also use that in photography and it works. I know it works. I know it works. I just would like other strategies. Got it. Yeah. Um, actually, that is another, like, uh, maybe a last thing, something that you were touching upon, upon like communication. That was actually another topic that I wanted to ask, but I'll ask that in a, like in a few more minutes. But so first, let's stick to this for a few more minutes then. So, Okay. And I think it also helps to tell them, I also always tell them that, yeah, it's that even models, like for example, there's some things that repeat, they don't know where to put their hands when it's a normal person I'm taking a portrait yeah. of. Mm -hmm. And I tell them that's super normal. That's also models have that problem. It's one of the hardest things in, mm -hmm. in a picture of how to position your hands because all of a sudden you're conscious about it. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah. And I think another thing that helps is that I'm giving honest feedback. And there again, I'm, it's very interesting because usually I think everything through when I'm communicating and before I say something, mm -hmm. but in that moment, it just, I just trust that good things come out and I'm honestly giving feedback saying like, no, that doesn't work yep. or yeah, yeah, do more like this or no, it's no, no. I think we are not, getting there, like come and look at the, at the monitor and I can show you what I mean. Yeah. And, and no, you look like a insecure child on this picture, but this one I love. 
Mm. You know, just to be not to be because I don't want to be fake and say like, oh, you look wonderful. It's, everything is beautiful. Yeah, you don't give direction with that, right? When you say it's always great. Yeah. Because then, then they're not sure. Like, really, does everything look great? What I do. <laughs> so it helps actually to be very clear. Like, yeah, that looks good. That doesn't look good because it gives structure to them and clarity of okay, this works. This doesn't work. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think like. I don't know, maybe I'm not saying that this is the right way to do it, but I know that I'm also maybe <laughs> I might offend people sometimes, I think, because when they look like super funny, like weird, then I start laughing about them, okay. but kind of try to get them on board and, and laugh with them. Mm. I'm, you know, it's, they are vulnerable and I'm not denying it. Yep. And then what helps too is that, like I said, I fall in love with a person in front of the camera and I get enthusiastic. I, this is one of the questions that he asked in the book where, where you get so enthusiastic that you cannot stop. Yeah. It's when I photograph and then this transmits back to the person. I think they also get enthusiastic. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, if they feel like you're into, uh, enthusiastic, <laughs> that's a word that I can't pronounce, then, um, and it's real, then... Yeah. People feel that. Yeah. And it's like, it's, isn't it like the coolest thing? Because it's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like we are playing and it's teamwork. It's not that someone yeah. is sitting there and I'm doing the magic. No, no, no. We, it, we are together. We are mm. as a team. And then we come up with ideas that I haven't thought of before and that I couldn't do my own. Yeah. And I that can... makes both of them feel good. I can very much imagine that you are actually a good photographer. <laughs> that you do this really well in community or you're making them feel safe and comfortable. So how would you translate if if you would and if you do, you know, would you tra like do you translate any of those ways of making people safe and comfortable? Do you also use any of those things in just in life when you talk to people? Or not at all? Like I said, the, to connect with people, I use quite a lot to tell like stupid things about myself. And then I feel that other people also open up more. Yep. Um, but it's interesting because I think a lot in life is also about the mandate or role that you play. And, I've, and I feel shy to take up a lot of space if I'm not given the mandate. Mm. Um, so, um, I like that in photography, I can be, I can go up on a ladder and direct a hundred people around me and give orders and be silly and funny and everything and make like a group of, I don't know if I take event photography, make a group of a hundred people laugh, but I cannot do that when I'm not given that role. Hmm. And I hate it when everyone looks at me, I feel super shy, like in general. Yeah. Because I also feel like I'm inadequate and who am I? And, you know, I don't have enough to say. But again, like when I have that role, for example, I three times in my life, I think I walked in a fashion show mm -hmm. and I loved it <laughs> because I'm giving the mandate. I've, I've been given the mandate. So I, I'm allowed to shine. Mm -hmm. I'm allowed to take all the space and all the views and then I can fill that role but I wouldn't dare give it to myself. Hold on one second. You were in a fashion show? Yeah, as a model, like walking. Oh, wow. Didn't know. That was fun. That, that was, was fun. fun? You did that three times? Yeah, in Argentina and two times in Germany. In Argentina? Oh, the, oh yeah, you speak pretty good uh, Spanish or, or fluent, right? Yeah, but you don't have to speak when you're on the runway. No, I guess, <laughs> but I, I just, uh, I, I'm just linking this now because on your website, parts... I mean, there were also sections that were in Spanish, right? Yeah, yeah. I've lived there for three years in uh, Buenos Aires. All right. So that makes sense, actually, now. Got it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah I guess so that was so interesting, book. you know, because what, I mean, if you don't like to be in the spotlight, then you would assume that someone doesn't like to walk on the on a catwalk where it's like everyone watching you. Yeah, but it does have to do, like you said, with picking up a role and in that role that you picked up, it's part of, of, of it, of being in the spotlight. I also kind of feel that I wouldn't be the worst leader. Like I can imagine myself leading like 
a couple of people or a company or I don't know. Whole Germany. The whole of Germany, right? <laughs> yeah. Trump's, I heard Trump's seat is free now. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I would not put my name on the list. And that's... Ah. Yeah. Okay, I got it. You would not put the name on, you would not put your name on the list, but if someone would, you would be a good leader? If someone said like, no one else can do it or wants to do it, Asya, we're in an emergency, you have to do it now. This is the only way, you know, you, 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 then I would be like, okay, I have to do it. And then I think I would do it well. Yeah. But I wouldn't like to push other people aside huh. to be able to get to that position. Okay. I get that. Yeah. You would do what is necessary needed. If no one else would be wanting to do it. Yeah. It's like two separate things, right? One is like, would you fill the role? Well, would you do the job? Well, once mm -hmm. you are there and I think yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. But then like, um, how to get there. Okay. How to get there. How to get there? Someone should else should give me the mandate. I'm not. Uh, you would not naturally give strong it to enough yourself. or able enough to claim space for me. Oh. I want it to be given to me. Okay. But of course, I I, I read that that's also a little typical women men topic that, and and if you want to succeed in life, I think you cannot wait that someone gives you the spotlight or the stage or that's space. true you have to take it <laughs> yeah you don't have to take it per se by destroying everything in your way right i mean that's one way to take something for sure <laughs> yeah. but you can also i mean take you can also yeah take something by being the best at at it right that you but naturally... then someone says like oh my god you're so good you have to write a book or you should be the next president of our company yeah it's, I think it's a difference to that happening that you shine so brightly that people cannot ignore you anymore. Mm -hmm. Then you saying, you know, I'm not shining yet, but I should have that position. Well, that's something very different. Yes. I mean, you do have to work and show that you are capable and that you deserve such a role or such a position, right? You shouldn't just demand it, even if you didn't do anything to deserve it. But I would, think that or would say that there's a lot of people who do that oh yeah i would say that too <laughs> who just prefer power um yeah or or, or, reckon, or recognition you know yeah uh, power sure is one thing uh but i think recognition is another one yeah, yeah or, definitely you know. different motivations to go there yeah and then also maybe thinking that they honestly serve um people by being in that position. I don't think that people only do it because they don't care about the rest and think that I get rich and I have a lot of prestige. I think also uh -huh. politicians from both parties or from every party are not evil people. They think no. that they are doing something good for the people, just that I don't sometimes agree with what is good for the people, <laughs> what they think. Yeah, sure. No, of course. And, and definitely, um, yeah, and, and, but then you just see how they're trying to get to that position. I think if they're trying to destroy everyone around them, then I don't think their motives are very good. But if they're trying to get to it by actually showing that they have expertise and know what they're doing and that they generally want to make things better um, and try to get to that position in such a way. But I still think that even a dictator is not thinking, ha, ha, ha. I'm so powerful, no one can take it away from me, so now I can live my perfect life and I'm just, I don't care about the people. I think even dictators think it's best for everyone if I'm in power because I know better than the rest. And then ultimately they will thank me. Yeah. Well, that's a, a, another personality uh, that you might be talking about there. Um, someone who is a bit narcissistic could think very easily that they're the best and know everything even without actually touching upon the feedback from others to, to see if it's true or not. Yeah, because everyone else is less than them and inadequate, so they don't well, have yeah, anyone the on their level who can mm -hmm. really give valuable feedback. Like, I would listen to someone if they were, like, competent. Yeah. <laughs> sure, yeah, if they were competent and knew what they were talking about. Yeah. Um, and as, as they are not. 
better if I stay here and do daddy looks after things. <laughs> yeah, but it's also good about even listening to people who might not be competent, but they also have a, a thought and opinion and feelings and to listen to the general feedback of the collective. Yeah, I completely agree with you. But I'm just saying that I don't believe that those people are generally evil uh -huh. and just do it like consciously only to their own benefit. I okay. Think that they at least deceive themselves thinking that they maybe it's also good for them, but that they are also doing it to oh, I see. be yeah, of even... service to the people. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I don't think that, or maybe I'm in general, and maybe I'm naive, but I just don't believe that there's any person in power thinking like, seriously, I don't care about anyone, just about myself. I think they also kind of tell themselves, I am good for everyone else. Yes. I mean, to a degree, I would say, I would say so too. Uh, but they might be a little bit delusion, delusional on what totally. is good. Totally. But like you said, I don't think they're all completely evil and they might have the right motives in their mind what could be the best for people, even if it might not be the best. It's like, uh, haha, I'm so evil, but people don't <laughs> notice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. Let me, let, let's switch uh, topics to something different, to something, if you have something uh, uh, more on your list, let's switch to that. And then after that, let me share one more and then... I guess we can run things up. All right. Not like to rush things or so, but... Uh... Sounds like a good plan. Well, I am, I'm a little bit embarrassed that you, everything that you have on your list is a question to me. And most of the things I have on my list is like things that move me in this moment. And then, it doesn't have, matter. then I have a few questions to you. <laughs> Don't worry. It, it, it's just how they kind of came to me for this conversation. But... Uh, <laughs> It's however, whatever you wanted to talk about, so. Well, let me think, what do you prefer? A question to you or a topic <laughs> that's moving me at the moment? <laughs> what, do you, what do you feel more in the mood to talk about? So maybe I can combine one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, yes. No, no, no. Okay, no, no. I changed my mind. So I'm struggling with, um, I told you, I think in the last talk that I've, I had taken up meditation in, um, I think, the last uh, nearly a year ago, mm -hmm. a little less. Yep. And it was going well and I was committed, but I've been more loose ultimately because I kind of don't see the point of and it. yeah the point of it i don't really know why i'm doing it anymore or like i don't gain anything i haven't really found a good method for me yet yep. so i would love to know like mm -hmm. how do you see meditation do you do it how do you handle it uh, is it good for you um, what do you use it for yep i used to do it frequently meditation just, I mean, nothing intense, uh, just like with headspace, 10 minutes every morning. That's kind of it. Um, but I would say for the most part, I haven't done it than I have. So right now, since, I don't know, it's been a while since I actually did it. Um, and mainly because I just don't feel, I feel like I there are other things that I can do that benefit me more like working out, for example, or like sporting, moving. That does so much more for me than sitting down and meditating. I feel less benefits with that than with the working out. So I rather spend some more time on something that feels better for me personally uh -huh. than on something that is quite popular at the moment and that a lot of yeah. people recommend. Yeah, not to say that, I mean, meditation is amazing. It really is effective for a lot of people, but just at the moment in this, in this time where I am right now in my life, I don't feel the need too much to meditate. Um, I don't feel like I feel more to move. I feel like I get more benefits from that. So that's where I stand with meditation. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
yeah because i feel if it, meditation is maybe good for people who are like busy ex executives who rush all day long and really don't ever have a minute to themselves to really breathe and sit down and just calm down but i don't know how it's with you but i feel i have that in my day so i'm not lacking that me too and meditation can be i mean it, it has so many forms it doesn't always mean just to sit down you know it also could be very being very mindful when you walk, for example, for example, when you move uh, for a few minutes to sort of meditate in that state of movement, uh, or maybe it's more than mindful, mindfulness and meditation. I don't know, um, but it also it also gives um, um, clarity and and relaxation and peace when you're just moving and you're mindful. So, yeah. I, I do a lot of walks um, throughout the day. Uh, whenever I work, I always work with like a Pomodoro technique, like for a set amount of times or minutes. And then every time the timer goes off, I go for a little short walk. Um, oh, really? Oh, wow. And I try to just go on a very mindful walk where I'm just, the only thing that I do is just walk. I don't, in, in the past, I used to listen to maybe a podcast or, or, or did something else, but now I'm just going to go for a five, 10 minute walk and that's it. But just walking, that's all. And then I return back work and I repeat that throughout the day, actually. How um, long is the Pomodoro slice? Uh, right now, I, I've, I mean, it can change. Um, I've used to, uh, like for the last few years, I always did like 45 minutes, but now I've adjusted it to 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, it just at the moment feels better for me. So now it's 35 minutes and then a 10 minutes walk, uh, then another 35 minutes. And then I take a bit of a longer break. So every, every two sets, I take a longer break of mm -hmm. half an hour or something to eat something or, or just relax a bit. Do you take your phone in the break? Yeah, it could be. Yeah. But yeah. when I actually do work, I literally remove my phone from my work area. I put it in another room or I put it in my bag on flight mode because, uh, yeah, it's too distracting. <laughs> mm. uh, but yes, uh, in a break, I, I, I'm allowed to do whatever, actually, so I can look on my phone. I don't, I don't want to put restrictions on everything. And mm -hmm. with a break, yeah, that's a restriction-free moment, kind of. <laughs> I know that's what people like everyone says like don't let the phone be the last thing you look at at night and don't make it the first thing in the morning that they are like opening one eye and then looking at your phone mm -hmm. and i know that <laughs> but so no but so far like i'm do I'm, I'm still doing it and i don't see the reason not to do it like a little because bit it interrupt. helps you to wake up and it helps you to fall asleep yes or no, it doesn't help me to fall asleep, but I feel like there's no, I don't see any negative consequence or I would, maybe okay. I would have to leave it for a while to see if I feel better or anything. Yeah. But mm -hmm. in the morning, I feel like kind of, I'm not really there. So it's quite, it's quite effective to use that time to scroll through Instagram and not use my most productive moments for Instagram mm -hmm. because I want to keep up. And mm -hmm. so it's good to use that time. And also I read the first emails and I feel then I'm already a little bit informed before I get to work. I think why uh, generally why you it, it would be better to not uh, do that is because you get a, a high stimulus uh, from the right when you wake up. You know, the bright screen uh, emails, so that could equal to stress. Your body doesn't even have any minutes or time to slowly sort of wake up. Um, and so it helps very effective. It helps to immediately get sort of uh, awake or, or faster, but maybe it is less healthy because it, it's too, too fast for your body. I, I actually do not know. Uh, maybe, too, too yeah, much, but, but I haven't, I haven't noticed any negative effects so far. Right. But then also because you have not tried, uh, uh, an amount of months to not do that you know That's so true. you cannot compare actually the effects because you do not have anything to compare it to i and think so recent, yeah sorry. the same actually yeah sorry to to go on but but the same actually when when you actually said that you've been having um, more bad dreams or you know because that could also maybe come from the phone or from that amount of content that you're consuming on that it affects your brain so why not would it affect your uh 
Maybe, your yeah. dreams. Uh, but it's just also like, um, yeah, a blue screen, even if you have like a, a filter on it to, to take the blue light away. It's still exposure to the light that doesn't help uh, for you to fall asleep with. Last night I woke up at four, I think, and I was awake until five in the morning, so one, one hour. Yep. And I tried for the first time, I took three drops of CBD oil. Ah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Just to, but I didn't notice any effect. I mean, I think without it, I would have fallen asleep after one hour anyways. Yep. Do you but have any experience with that? I have not, uh, but I know people who tried it um, and I've read uh, about it as well. Um, I let, uh, I've read a lot of uh, positive things actually about it. Uh, and also from people who I know who tried it, uh, they were pretty positive about it. So, but personally I cannot, um, I, I have no experience with it. Mm. Yeah, me neither. Like was the first time this night and um, yep. yeah, I'm curious. So C C CBD for everyone listening is actually cannabis oil. Yeah, but without the without the component that makes yep. you hallucinate or exactly. high so or anything. The the effect that you have is just uh, the effect of relaxation without the the by effect of actually getting high. So that's why you fall asleep, for example, uh, or when you're a lot of times very stressful or anxious, uh, it could help. Just to sum up the meditation part, oh, yeah, I so <laughs> like the Naval Ravikant, he on the podcast with Tim Ferriss, he talks about his practice of sitting for one hour, just right. sitting still. And I think as far as understood, he has been doing it for the past two years and he has missed only 12 days so far, more or less. And he yeah. just sits still for one hour and he's not even, I think, calling it meditation. Mm -hmm. Because then there is no expectancy of expectation exactly. of be like breathing right or not thinking. It's just sitting still for one hour. And he said, unfortunately, it's not possible to do it less than an hour because you need 30 to 40 minutes to really, really let go and sit and, and get into a different state. Yep. And it sounded super interesting. So it's on my wish list to try in the future. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It sounds very interesting uh, to try that. And I love that he tried to, or that he removes the label of meditation of it, because then there's an expectancy uh, on it. So it's just about, yeah, sitting there and whatever happens, or at least how he describes what he does is just, if you think, you think, if you don't think, you don't think. If you're stressed, you just are stressed for that hour. It's just whatever happens, but it's just one hour where you just sit with yourself and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, sounds fascinating. Yeah. So, but how is your, how is your, because you said that you, you said it's not been working or, I mean, or that you are not feeling the benefits of it too much of meditation. I questioned why I was doing it in the first place. Mm -hmm. And if I try to remember, I think it was because I feel kind of feel this fog in my head mm -hmm. a lot that I feel like I'm not really focusing clearly. And I wish that to be uh, bettered by uh, meditation. Maybe meditation? that and being more in the present moment also. Mm -hmm. Because meditation is an effective way to, to accomplish that. But maybe you're missing something else, maybe moving like your body, mm. doing the exact opposite actually of sitting still could be what you need. Yeah. Because that's also something, I mean, that's also something that we, we are doing way too less. You know, we are sitting still, like just without thoughts, meditating. That's something that we do way too less as well. But the moving part, that's something that we also do way too less in life. Yeah. And actually sitting down with thoughts is also something that I wish for more. I did it more when I was younger. I feel that I was just like sitting and thinking. And for me, it's not nothing negative because I know many people say like, oh, I have so many thoughts and that keep me worrying and I can't sleep. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's, it's not negative at all. Even if I think at night, I like it because there's something I have to, th I like there's mm -hmm. a reason. Yeah. And then I find a solution. And I feel that this um, capacity to do deep thinking is going um, down is also what Cal Newport says in his book, right? Um, I think it's called Deep Work. We talked mm, about it yep, last yep, time. Yep. And um, yeah, I noticed that. I wish for that more. I really would like to sit down more without distraction and think about things really deeply. 
and maybe instead of meditating i should really sit down one hour and just yeah. think that would make me happy i think and exactly do that what naval does and if you think that hour that you just do that maybe yeah. one other day you would not think you know whatever happens then yeah maybe try to experiment with that yeah instead of meditation because it is so it is really popular at the moment and it's almost like when you do not meditate you're not yeah. cool or i mean cool <laughs> or 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 you're doing it not correct you're not living correctly or something or especially maybe like in bali for example where everyone seems to do it uh i feel like there's more of a pressure almost in a way that when you do not meditate meditate or don't do yoga or something um but yeah true it's not about following what everyone does it's yeah. kind of experimenting and staying or doing something that at that moment is working for you i think i've been trying the app uh, waking up since uh december last year from uh, what's his name the waking uh, up app sam right? harris sam harris yes okay. yeah and I like the first 50 days to get me on board and to train a little bit, but it's, I have to admit that it's annoying me so much that like, I like the format of doing it every morning, 10 minutes. That is the perfect amount of time that I like can do in the mornings. But somehow he has this idea that you should in a snap, a finger snap in a moment, you should disconnect from yourself and look at the one who's looking and then realize that there is no one looking that it's like an illusion that you have like this core this personality that's looking out into the world but that basically i think there's nothing and we are all just everything is universe and the same material yep. or i don't know and i just i understand it intellectually but it doesn't work for me and but he seems like he's a teacher who has just one uh, methodology or one um, pedagogic concept to bring it to his students and for me, it's like, if you're a good teacher, if it doesn't work with your students, then you try a different way. But he's just assisting and go, coming up with it again. And I feel so much rage inside me when I hear him say that another time. But look, then he's not the right teacher for you. Yeah, so I recently easy. put a, a meditation bell and I just put the timer on 10 minutes and I just like, I started to do it two times already, uh, like only so mm -hmm. far but it works better so i just sit still like naval says and then just 10 minutes for now yeah yeah and and maybe if you have not tried headspace have you tried it no i haven't tried it then i would honestly i mean i've tried some of the apps out there uh on meditation okay. and from all of them i am a huge fan of headspace because, because i tried calm and i didn't like it yeah, same um but it's just you can you can and i think this might be very nice for you um is that you and it's for me as well right but you can pick what you kind of want to meditate on like what you want to focus on so there's little block like there's little categories like you can meditate like a 30-day session on happiness on sadness when you're pregnant there's one when you're stressed <laughs> okay. or when you want to get more focus there is one like there's all these little one uh, all these um sessions that you can you can join or that you can take for like 30 days, I think each one is, uh, but each one has a, of them as like a different focus. And uh, right. maybe it can resonate or that you can pick one that resonates more for you on that month or on the, on this day, right? Um, okay, thanks. Yeah, good. Um, I just found it very, good idea. yeah, I like it. I really like it. I like it. I will space. give it a try. But Calm has the same thing. It's about uh, gratitude or anxiety or sleep or something. But I, somehow I didn't like the voice. I didn't like, uh, <laughs> yeah. it was for me like too superficial and commercial or I don't know, like mm. something was not really right. But yeah. I will give a headspace a try. Yeah, just give it a try. I think they also have a, um, I don't know, uh, they have a trial, uh, mm. like an intro trial for some days. They also have like some fun animations to explain concepts. So I like that. <laughs> <laughs> cool but it's just uh, it gives a lot of options so yeah so let's see i don't know how like i or feel i should keep the last one that i have uh for a next time i don't know how you feel uh we've been talking now for almost two hours and 30 minutes so maybe it could be good what? <laughs> yes. no two yeah. hours and 15 minutes well all right we're getting to <laughs> two to 30 minutes but um 
yeah, I think this could be a maybe personally, I think, right? I don't know if you still feel like you have some energy, but uh, maybe I could keep this for next time. The next question. I have for energy wise, I'm, I'm still there, but I also feel it's, it's like good to not have a podcast that's too long. Yeah. So okay. I love to have a next time with you, yes, maybe yes. in six months or something maybe in six months yeah so we can because i i calculated today we had the last one in may and now it's november so that's six months so oh, it's nice it? to have um like wow. see how we develop in our thinking in six months yeah okay damn that's fast yeah and it's so like a pandemic wow. but can you say the topic i'm just i just curious. i just wanted to do that all right so <laughs> This is a teaser for you and for everyone listening then <laughs> for in six months, this is to come between, between us two. So uh, this question is, um, there are certain skills in life that are almost like superpowers. And funny enough, Naval was also talk, um, talking about this uh, in the interview with Tim Ferriss. <laughs> but there are certain skills that are almost like superpowers when you get even a little bit better at them. Uh, and I'm currently creating a course for the IBS uh, Academy about learning, uh, about learning how to learn. Uh, I'll probably put another name on that, but... That's also Josh Whiteskin, right? Uh, yeah, he, I mean, he's probably a good example of someone who, who mastered the skill of learning, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I... I, I, I damn, I'm going to explain otherwise way too much. But basically... <laughs> basically it is uh, a question it's a sort of two-part question where i wanted to kind of talk with you and see if you would have some other ones to add to the list of skills that are like superpowers and then also to go through that list because i have a list here of what i would what i consider as superpowers uh, skills that are superpowers uh, so uh, to go through that list Oh my add, God, I can't wait for six months <laughs> to pass. <laughs> and then add to each skill uh, something that you do or that how you improve it. Um, and I will add something too on that. And then if you add, or if you have any other skills that you think of to add to that list of superpowers. Um, but in six months, it will be too late for you. What do you mean it will be too late for me? I mean, because then you will have designed your course probably already. Yeah, and it actually has nothing to do with my course. Uh, ah, I just okay. mean like learning how to learn. That's what I would consider a skill ah, okay. that is like a superpower. Ah, Communication, okay. for example, is also a skill that I would consider a superpower if you get really good ah, at it. Ah, okay. Um, and one that Naval actually said that I also thought was one is calmness. It's a real, if you can develop the skill of being calm, um in stressful moments that's yeah. a, a huge superpower and and another one that i actually just added before uh we started was uh fun you know <laughs> i think that's if you can get better at the skill of having more fun in life that's a true superpower i think i think yeah uh, and there's a few more but those i am gonna leave then for in a few months <laughs> all right I so like that's a it. teaser uh, something to think about uh, and uh, we can uh, can chew next time on that. So before I'm going to say goodbye, is there anything that for anyone listening, is there anything that you want to direct people to? Anything that you're excited about uh, that you want to share? Um, yeah. Or any, any last words that you want to throw out in the world? I think for the German people, I the recently <laughs> I recently joined an um, association called Citizen Circle, yep. and it's location independent entrepreneurs, uh, or at least aspiring to be location independent entrepreneurs. And we've ta been talking in May about my deep wish to find my tribe, to find people who like understand me or where I feel connected, mm -hmm. and that is my attempt. Um, so I joined them two weeks ago and so far it's been super interesting and I've been already meeting people online, but even going in Hamburg for, for walks and it's in the whole of Germany and Switzerland and Austria. Yeah. So it's German speaking. So it is only German speaking. Yeah. It's only German speaking. I'm wondering, I mean, I guess all of them speak English. So if someone living in Germany um, right. wants mm -hmm. to join, that wouldn't be a problem at all. 
and most of and some of them live in Thailand or South yep. Africa. Yeah. All right, cool. Naturally, <laughs> if, if they are location independent. So I, I, I just recommend other people maybe to check that out too. Also in my own interest, because I want more cool people to join. Yeah. How is it called again? Citizen Circle. Citizen Circle dot, dot com or? Let me just check that quickly. I mean, maybe if you just type that in, you will, uh, you will go to it. Um, okay. Uh, cool. Dot de. Dot so de. All right. So there we go. is the German ending. Yep. So uh, maybe to add one last thing on that, because it's sort of similar to what that community is, but uh, Wi-Fi tribe dot co okay uh, i've went uh, on a trip one trip at least with them mm -hmm. um it's maybe a little bit different of a concept but they actually move one month to a certain country uh they rent i mean you pay then right uh but then you stay with i stayed in budapest with 20 or maybe 15 uh people in one huge apartment uh for one month and it was amazing it was so much fun it was we did a lot of partying, to be honest, but some working <laughs> here and there too. Uh, but uh, they had a little co-working space in the apartment. So a working area, everyone at their room. Uh, and it was an amazing way to connect very intimately, actually, because you live together with some very interesting people. And I would love to do another trip with them when it's possible, because now with Corona, it's not possible. But honestly... Um, if you ever want to try something like that, I could really recommend that actually. Wi-Fi oh, Tribe. I will check it out. Yeah, definitely it's check it really out. really fun, and they do travels around the whole world in Europe, Africa, in Asia, everywhere. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, I like it. Right, that's a good recommendation. Yeah. And to put one last, last, last thing. Go for it. Not to go into detail or talk about it, but just to leave it as a cliffhanger, as a reminder for myself to see if I developed in six months looking back. Uh -huh. um, at the moment, I feel a little bit in lack of direction and vision for my company. Mm. So okay. the interesting point is that I'm for the first time financially quite stable, so I don't worry about that. So now there's space free to think where do I want to go? Oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting place to be at, actually. That's an interesting place. And I'm not not um, how's it called um anxious yeah i'm not or anxious I, I think i will find it but i don't know it yet and yeah. and of course i want to know it um or yeah and so i would love to find help and help have people help me dream big Mm -hmm. What would be like the coolest thing that I could achieve with my photography? Would it be like to be on the cover of Vogue magazine in Italy? Mm -hmm. Or would it be, I don't know, to meet, I don't so even it, know which photographer. It's kind of about what's the Gucci. next level. Yeah, what's the next level? Yeah, not what's the next level, what's like the ultimate level. Oh, what's the ultimate level? So what's the best thing that... I can ever achieve with my photography in my life. What am, am mm. I aspiring to? And I, I would like to find answers. I don't have any so far. And I think that would give me some direction. And then I could also know where to put all my effort and my goals. Yeah, exactly. So let's see where I stand with that question in, in six months. I, I mean, I'm honestly curious and excited to hear about that uh, too. Because it is a very interesting crossroads. Uh, or a place to be at to finally get the chance to sort of be okay like what would be the ultimate destination that i want to get to uh, and i'm curious to to hear actually where that will be for you a photographer friend uh, like a mentor kind of a mentor he said what well, being on the vogue cover is that's too small and i asked him yeah but what i i, I need like a list of possible mm -hmm. goals you know what could be and he said yeah it's to create pictures that stand the test of time that um, is, that, I mean, big. that is uh, big <laughs> for some, it could be the ultimate goal, but maybe. But I don't even know if it's mine. Like, yeah, exactly. exactly. Like, wh what do I care if I'm dead? I'm dead. You know, I think maybe a question to ask for yourself is like, what in the end would you like to be remembered by as a photographer or like professionally and try to see what, 
where that that question is leading you to. Yeah, I will write it down. <laughs> so, but I would say with that, let's end this conversation and uh, we'll resume in some months. Super cool. <laughs> thank you so much, Yalis. Thanks for doing this. Uh, well, thank you for, uh, for coming on again. And it doesn't matter if like we are the only people ever listening to this again, but this is so oh. valuable for me. There's actually, I mean, um, so it's both video and audio. Uh, so audio, it's like on Spotify and, and every podcast place. But I have the statistics of the amount of people who listen uh, to, to the interviews or to the talks. And it's actually more than I expected, to be honest. Okay. I mean, it's not a thousand or, you so know. So three instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't, don't tell me the numbers. I don't even want to know. <laughs> Okay, but I mean, for for a beginning podcast, uh, it, it's more than I actually thought. So okay, wow. Yeah, uh, so actually, and and some people even that I know that were like, oh, I listened to that that conversation that you had with that person uh, on this podcast, and I was like, oh, okay. So I feel like more people are actually listening to this than you think. I was listening to the one that you had with uh, Philip and the other guy <laughs> Marvin, and also with a woman. Um, Oh, and I found uh, both of them interesting, worthwhile. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The only feedback that I have received is uh, that sometimes they are, and that's why I thought now is a good time to sort of stop, that sometimes they, uh, that maybe three hours is too long. Yes, I agree. Um, so I'm more s trying to be a bit more aware to sort of not pass the, well, to not pass three hours but to sort of go more to the two hour once as a max or two hours and, you know, a few minutes and, and to sort of keep them a bit more dynamic to not stick. I, I did that in the beginning with one uh, that I was talking a bit too much around one uh, topic when we kind of said everything about it, uh, but that was my fault. Actually, I should have kind of converted to the next topic. So, uh, but that was sort of the two pieces of feedback that I've received from, from people. Um, Okay. To keep it dynamic and to keep it a little bit shorter than three hours. It's interesting because the first time we did it, I mm -hmm. was expecting half an hour. And then I was always so insecure seeing you so comfortable and going on talking. And I felt like, okay, okay. <laughs> right. Then we go on, we on. So yeah. this time I was already thinking, like, okay, I understand. Oh, no. He wants it to be two hours long, so I'll just go on. About yeah, yeah, it's fine. And it doesn't have to be like set to a minute that we have to switch over you know, after 10 minutes to another one or something. It's kind of like when we both feel like, okay, we've kind of said everything on this topic. Let's move to the next one. But that, yeah, yeah, not to keep, keep going about it hours and hours. Uh, but yes, there needs to be a depth or I wanted to have a depth. Uh, you have depth when there's uh, a, an X amount of time that you can talk about something. So I don't want to rush to talk about something. Yeah, I understand what you But mean. I don't want to over Yeah, it's good. It. But maybe that would be helpful for your guests to um, to have like a rough yeah. expectancy of time. Say like, oh, this might last between yeah. one and two hours or something like this. Um, I just released a fourth episode uh, actually with the, the guy who also I lived saw in it. I, I didn't listen to it, but I saw that. Oh, yeah. And yeah. funny enough, he actually turned 40 this uh, oh, really? few months ago too. And oh. we actually talked about that. Uh, in the last bit of uh, our conversation. Um, but I actually gave him more directions uh, about the the conversation because I also had more understanding what I'm kind of trying to do with this. In the sure. beginning, it's always going to be a little of bit course. rougher. Yeah. So yes. Um, but I agree to give a bit more structure and lines from okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like... Mm -hmm. But all right, I'm actually uh, excited to talk for a third time <laughs> and hopefully for a few more times on this with you. Super cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep that question then for the next one. <laughs> well, thanks so much for this lovely talk. Yeah, thank you. Um, any plans still for you tonight or for, is it, for the week to come? It's, yeah, the week is full. I have a, I have a big shooting. Okay. 
well, week, I mean, to Wednesday and Thursday. And I have, uh, I recently did a big shooting and the people have selected the, I don't know, 60 photographs. So I have to do the retouching mm. at the end of the, the rest of the week. And um, for tonight, yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm reading a book. I'm trying to read novel, a novel at night. So to not only put my head full of, you know, those books about yeah. self-development, and um, I've, it's, uh, I like science fiction a lot. Me too. And I heard on Tim Ferriss' podcast, but also from other sources, that Dune, you know, the, the desert I know it's, planet. I've read it, yeah. Yeah, that is like one of the best science fiction novels of all times. And mm -hmm. I maybe, maybe the mistake was that I bought it in German, but I don't like it. And I'm already so, five chapters in, but I cannot admit this to myself because i think like something must be wrong with me you know no. because if it's the greatest i have to give it another try another so maybe tonight i'll read another chapter i i actually made not too long ago a youtube video also my personal youtube channel and because it's actually one of the best tips that i ever uh, applied to falling asleep is to read fiction books uh, and i actually made a video where i recommend it because uh, i've read so many fiction books um <laughs> where i read you some of the best fiction books that I've re read over the last few years. Uh, so I have read Dune. Uh, I actually do not recommend it. Um, it Interesting. Is, it is, I don't, I, uh, I agree. I mean, a lot of people, yeah, I, I, I know a lot of actually high, uh, who are very into fiction books as well, who do not like the book either. Um, okay. It's a bit too complex sometimes and it's a bit too confusing and the story is not always too and badly written. I feel like ripping. It's... Yeah, that could be the German translation, though. But that might be the German. Like for example, sentences like I learned about when you write good fiction is that you create an atmosphere and you don't say mm -hmm. things bluntly. Like you don't say, um, "He went down the stairs to the cellar and it was so scary." That's like a bad writing. You would write like, "He went down the stairs." and the darkness lurked up and the yeah, yeah. candle was blowing in the wind of the open window mm -hmm. so that you create this um, a visual sense this, this feeling and i feel that in this book they're doing that it's like writing the lord of so and so was really ugly yeah like no you should write like he had a big belly and had like i don't know you know like bad okay. skin or blah 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 and that makes me think that he's ugly but don't write like he's ugly yeah well um, but a, a, a huge reason why it's actually a such talked about book is because it was sort of one of the first huge fancy fiction books that had a very deep and complex lore and story. And so it's kind of like, that's why it's many times sort of like, a, it's sort of like the first one uh, that started everything like Star Wars yeah. and all. But I, I can't really recommend it to be honest to people. Um, if you would have, if you would like a good fiction book, mm -hmm. I honestly could either recommend Brent Sanderson, the writer. Uh, he has honestly, he, uh, he's so, like, <laughs> I'm <laughs> such a huge fan of him and he's still alive. Is so, it science fiction or just fiction in general? Uh, it's, it's science fiction, fantasy. He writes very different mm -hmm. kind of stories. Uh, if you like more sci science fiction, do you like more science fiction or fiction? No, I, look, I like fantasy. I like science fiction. I mean, I read a lot of genres. I don't really read horror. Yeah, okay, then. Uh, but honestly, Brandon Sanderson, he is uh, an amazing right. writer. Holy crap. Uh, if you would like to read a trilogy of him, uh, the final, uh, the Mistborn, the Mistborn trilogy. I've recommended that trilogy to a few friends of mine, and each one loved, loved, loved them. So it's M I S B O R N. Mist born, like mist. Like born from uh, from yeah. being born, from, like as yeah. a birth. Kind of being born in the mist, but then mist born. Ah, yeah. uh, mist. Yeah, okay. the mist, like fuck. Um, okay. I really recommend that. Uh, if you wouldn't. Uh, Maybe in a I should read it in English because yeah, I don't have always... a problem reading in English, you know? So if it. Yeah. If I can it doesn't matter. It's like watching a TV series or, or a, a movie that's dubbed. It's 
No, you should not do that. Yeah. You should, you know, you should reach, I know Germany <laughs> does that. You should not do that. No, no, no. no I, I tried to watch it in English. <laughs> um, do you know the series New Girl? I know it. it. I mean, I've never really watched it. Zoe de Chanel. The actress. Okay, no, I thought I yeah. thought maybe we could connect because I Sorry. love it so much, and I don't watch any series usually. But anyways, doesn't matter. Okay, yeah. Brandon Sanderson. I will. Yes. Look so that up. that's one, a last one that I would highly recommend, and that's one that I cannot stop reading right now. And I start with this is um, it's from Robin Hop. She's a writer, but she's also one of the all-time great writers of this age, of this time. And Brandon Sanderson as, as well, actually. But um, and the Farseer trilogy is honestly, so far to me, my favorite book series. <laughs> is it because I'm, I'm longing for page turner, you know? I don't want to work oh, through my books. You, I have trouble. I, yeah, I, I'm looking forward every night to start reading that book again. <laughs> oh, super cool. So Robin, the, Robin Hopp. Yeah, Robin Hopp, uh, the Far yeah. Seer trilogy. It's it has everything. It really has everything for me. There's uh, magic. He can talk with animals. Yeah, uh, well, I mean that sounds maybe kind of weird, but like it's it's so in depth, well explained, so great written. I it's hard to even put it into words, but it's it's highly recommended. Yep. Super, super. I like that. Do you remember the book that I read when I was in Bali um, from? Uh, I forgot his name, Philip Pullman. So the movie that was made late made me years later was called The Golden Golden Compass. I oh yeah, of course, yeah. Northern Northern Lights, and then the the Amber Spyglass and mm. the books should be really good. The movie sucks. Oh, you watched the movie already? I didn't watch it. Oh no, I didn't watch it because it was so badly uh. reviewed. Okay, but the books... because the books, I don't, I mean, I don't know your taste in books so well, but I love them. They were, yeah, yeah. they are still moving me, even though it's been months that I read them and mm -hmm. still like, I still wish I could go back to that world. All right, then. I I've think not... you could give it a try, but it's more, it's like more written for children or teenagers, but still a lot of adults read it. Well, I've, I've actually read a Narnia. Oh, I love Narnia. Yes. Oh my God, it's one of my old friends. <gasps> and I was telling this some years ago or like a year ago to a friend that he was like, but that's for children. And I was like, yeah, but it's great. <laughs> I should reread it because I read it as a child and I love it. Right, but if you want to get lost in a world that is so well thought out and built out, then uh, yeah, check out the Farsi trilogy. Okay. It is actually, I mean, it has a trilogy. I finished that. And it has actually about nine books in the whole world, I think, yeah. And now I'm reading the second trilogy in that world. <laughs> and then after that, I, don't, I think there's even 12 books, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, like, there's so much to get into. Uh, but the trilogy, the first one alone, it could be enough for you to read if you don't want to consume afterwards anymore. That, that has kind of like a, a finishing line or story. The ending is good. But if you I want to tune, the older I get, the less I can read books that are too um, scary. Is it like very? Uh, is, it, is there a lot of blood and? No, but it is. You feel, and this is I do like this. Uh, you feel, you feel the struggle, like it is so well written, and and for example, sometimes you have with a book that they travel to some long far destination and then one day after it seems in the book that the next page they're there you know like mm -hmm. sometimes in some books you have that when they in that book travel to some far destination you're literally going on with you, you it feels like you are traveling with them for three three months for example okay or something. um so it feels like uh the pressure or the 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 struggle in the book you do feel that but it's not too it's not horror or a lot of blood or that it's not okay. like that Okay, well, struggle, nothing against But struggle. there's some struggles that you, yeah, that, that creates a story, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> Did you read Harry Potter? Yeah, I did, um, but only until the third book. And not because I don't want to read the next or the other ones, but I also just recently, like last year, also started with that. 
But oh, I just... really? Just recently? Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Okay. I read them when I was 16 or something. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't read books until I was 12. Uh, sorry, 18. Oh, uh, what? I read my first book when I was... No. Yeah. Uh, no, 21, actually. Sorry. Yeah. Apart from the books you had to read at school, I guess. We didn't have to read books in school like that we had to. What crappy uh, school were you going to? <laughs> Yeah, I didn't went to a great school. <laughs> or, I mean, like, I mean, it was a great school in, in certain aspects, but uh, not to create oh my God. general so knowledge. So if I ever have a son and he doesn't <laughs> read, then I, I shouldn't give up hope because apparently you can start with 21 and still. But look, I wasn't exposed to good books, so I didn't know that there were good books. I just saw a big book and I was like, yeah. I didn't have any interest in it because no interest was sparked in the past from anyone to me. You have to be introduced to it, right? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, that's and, true. And then, and then you can tune, but uh, no one introduced me to it until I was 21. Who introduced <laughs> you to it? Uh, this was in Australia, actually. I think maybe it was that. Yeah, I think you, I think it was uh, in Australia, like um, it was a, uh, like a survival training that I was doing. And uh, yeah. it, was, it was like an SIS patrol commander. He was in the army. And he, he actually told me about him. Yeah, but he was like around the, the, the survival training was also about uh, the warrior aspects and the mindset of that. And uh, he recommended me a book uh, about that topic. And I just started reading it and I was like, holy shit. And it was like a self, it was my first self-development book. And it's called The Way of the Peaceful Warrior by uh -huh. Dan Millman. It's also made into a movie, I think. Um, good book. I really, it's still a great book. But it was a first introduction in self-development. And it, like a whole, another world opened up. <laughs> so interesting because also um, Naval Ravikant, in his podcast, he talks about that, that mm. he thinks reading is so important and that the way to getting to reading is just start with any crappy book like anything or not even crappy but anything that interests you and yes. if it's a graphic novel or if it's a book about pornography it doesn't matter yeah. Yeah, yeah. because just to get you reading and then you get to more advanced levels. exactly and he said the ultimate goal is that you feel that you can go into the library and no book feels um, too big mm. to you or like too threatening yeah exactly a way you've never read anything every book feels like uh, <laughs> yeah. too much to do and uh, so, yeah, but I, I personally, and I'm gonna, uh, gonna leave uh, soon, but, um, I personally wished someone would have introduced me earlier because of the impact and change that one single book had on my life. And it was maybe also in the right moment in time, mm. but still, um, yeah, books can be a savior also. Books uh, honestly were a savior in my life. Yep. Yeah. I mean, but came late. So. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought we were talking off topic anyways. We were talking now off topic. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> In my mind, I had a, a point where... Yeah, me too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so now we I can hope. say all the naughty stuff. All the dirty things that you've been keeping in. <laughs> you can put them out now. <laughs> Super cool. All right. Um, yes. What are you doing tonight with the rest of the night? There's not so much night left. Yeah, I'm probably gonna start putting some things of this uh, conversation already finishing some things of that. Um, I need to eat something and then I'm, yeah, I'm going, going off to bed. <laughs> in which city are you at the moment? I'm in the city of Antwerp. So that is where your girlfriend is also? Yes. Is she in the same apartment? Uh, no, uh, she has an own apartment. But I thought you were staying with her when you were in Antwerp. Yep. So in what apartment are you right now? <laughs> I'm actually in my studio. So this is actually not in Antwerp, but in Hest of the Berg, which is a small town. Uh, and I have a little studio here. So I'm, it's, it's very close to my parents. Uh, so that's, that's why I just went over for the weekends to see my parents. Uh, and uh, yeah, and that's why I'm here. So I'm in a different building. But this is sort of the studio where I do my podcasts um, or my video, uh, like my courses or something. Or okay, videos. so you're not in Antwerp. No, I'm not in Antwerp. I'm in, in a small town. 
Uh, but I will go back to Antwerp uh, on Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, so. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So <sighs> let's talk next time some more. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, if you really get to reading the um, Philip Pullman's trilo trilogy about um, Northern Lights. Yes, I've added that I to my wish list. Dark dark matters or dark material or his dark matters series or I don't I, I always forget how it's called. Oh, okay. There's different names circling around, but you will find it. Yep. And then like if it's in a year or something, please tell me because I'm interested in your opinion. Uh, what sorry can you say that again like even if you read it in a year or in two years you know oh. there always comes the right time for a book i think it doesn't mm -hmm. you know because people recommend your books and it's not possible to read them all immediately yeah. so sometimes they linger in your bag uh, in yeah. the back of your head or on the list for a long time but then eventually you get to reading them and then i would love to hear from you and what you yes think about it. awesome i will i will <laughs> uh i will tell you um i will let you also know when this is uh live or online yeah um, you want to first listen to it yourself before i publish it like publicly or i mean it's not i think again... this time i'm fine but yeah. i'm more relaxed now and um yeah. but maybe i could have a check on the you put the show notes maybe something comes to my mind that yes please if, if i miss anything that you you uh yeah that you know it's then uh, yeah at, at that or tell me like last time because i was helpful but if it's, if it's not a big hassle for you, you can also, before you put it live, send it to me and I will listen to it. Uh, yeah. I mean, but it, it, it just do as it's best for you, but I would definitely be interested in listening to it. Of course, of course. So I will, I will, I will uh, yeah, send that to you. All right, anyway. Thank Asha. you. Good yes, night. Thank Always you. a pleasure seeing you, sharing time with you. Exactly. It Such was a, a huge privilege. Pleasure. <laughs> You have a nice evening there. You too. Bye-bye. Ciao.